Father, the privilege to come to your feet this morning to learn. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the grace that you give us all through the week uh, to, to do our daily work, to do our various, to carry out our various activities. And here we are at your feet to be this morning to learn. Father, we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you will open our hearts, you will open our ears to hear directly from your throne of grace this morning in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Good morning, everybody. Uh, this morning, our topic uh, is child adoption. But before we go into it, um, does anybody by any, uh, by, uh, any chance remember what we talked about last week, the topic that Brayinka covered? If anybody can remember, could you give us a quick synopsis of that topic? Uh, I believe the topic was um, about marital delay, um, reasons why they happen or why they could happen and stuff like that. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I think the, the core takeaways there for, for me was, you know, there were the definition of, you know, I mean, the, um, the likely causes of it. You know, what are the potential things that could have high-mindedness? I remember he emphasized that high-mindedness. Um, excessive focus on our careers and things like that. And also that, you know, while waiting, there are certain things that we could do, you know, such as, you know, holding on to God's promises, uh, ensuring that we're associating with the right group of people. So moving on to our topic today, child adoption, um, just um, we could read, you know, the memory verse together. If you can unmute, let's, let's read it together. Esther 2, verse 7. So unmute and let's, let's read it. One, two, three, go. This man had a very man beautiful, a very beautiful, beautiful lovely and lovely cousin, cousin Adassa, Adassa, who was called who Esther. Esther. When her father, father and, and mother, mother died, mother Kaya adopted, her, adopted, her, adopted her, her into his family. His family. And raise and her, her as, as his, his own daughter. daughter. Esther 2, Esther seven. two seven. Thank you. Um, we all know Queen Esther. Uh, I'm sure, I mean, it was actually my first time realizing that she was adopted. So that kind of, um, it gives us a context of what um, a person who is adopted into a good family could uh, evolve into the queen, or anybody very important. So um, we would de we'll delve into adoption, but I think it would be helpful for us to read um, the lesson text today, Exodus 2, uh, chapter, uh, Exodus 2, verse 1 to 10. So if anybody gets there before me, please feel free to read it. Exodus 2, 1 to 10. Okay, so I'll read it. I have it all on here. So about this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. Uh, the woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw, she saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden for three months. But when, he came, when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of papyrus reeds and water, uh, water proved it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of Nile River. The baby's sister then stood at a distance, watching to see what would happen to him. Soon Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the river bank. When the princess, when the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying and she felt sorry for him. That must be one of, the, uh, one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the baby's sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you, she, said, she asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. Take this boy and nurse him for me, the princess told the baby mo baby's mother. I will pay you for your help. 
So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Praise God. And we all know who this famous baby is. This was Moses. This was Moses. And who, who would have thought that Moses was an adopted child? So um, just to get some context as to what adoption is, uh, according to our uh, manual, child adoption is a process whereby a person assumes the parenting of another person's child. Adoption is the act of leaving one's natural family and entering into the privileges and responsibilities of another family. Adoption process typically goes through the legal process, as, as we know, law, court, in order for it to be made legal. Uh, adoption is a relationship of promise, acceptance uh, of an unconditional gift. And God cares for orphans, the poor, the abandoned, the displaced, as we've read about Moses here in, in the book of Exodus. You know, that time in Egypt, Pharaoh, the, the, the Pharaoh made a command that all of the Hebrew male kids should be murdered. And this mother wasn't ready to take chances with that child. And she took, she went the extra mile of trying to save a, a son's life. And as a result, Moses got an opportunity to be adopted. Um, if we look at the book of James 1.27, we would also see the biblical validation for adoption there. So if anybody gets there for me, please feel free to read James 1.27. So here it says... James, James what? James 1.27. Um, One twenty-seven. James. Here, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one twenty-seven, right? Yes. Okay. James one, um, verse twenty-seven. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Praise God. Thank you. So we do see here that God definitely cares about the most vulnerable you know, which, you know, somebody who's adopted, we don't know what circumstance, depending on the circumstance, is in that bucket of, you know, the people that God really cares deeply about. So our lessons, um, our lesson is broken into two, two parts. So the biblical instances of child adoption. So we would find examples like we've already read about Ruth and Moses and there, be, there are other people as well. Uh, the reasons for child adoption and the benefits and we'll have, we'll be completing the session with some key takeaways. So outline A, which is in examples or instances of adoption. So child adoption, like we already said, it's a biblical con uh, concept. God cares about the most vulnerable, uh, the poor amongst us. We, we know how deeply God cares and challenges us to do as well too. Uh, Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh's daughter adopted Moses. We just read uh, the book of Exodus uh, 5 verse 10. So we already went through that. So you know, if we look at that context of Moses and, and, and the mother who, and you know, she could have probably just left her child to, you know, whatever the fate was at that time, which must have, which must have been maybe death, you know, but she went the extra mile to see if she could save her son's life. And in the end, she ended up, uh, her son ended up in the hands of Pharaoh's daughter and, you know, she became an adopted mother for him. And as a result of that opportunity of that transition into Pharaoh's family, Moses grew up to become a faithful servant of God. We can go to the book of Exodus 3, chapter 3, verses 9 to 10. Book of Exodus 3, 9 to 10. So if anybody's there, please feel free to read. Exodus 9 to 10. It says, look, the cry of the people of Israel had reached me, and I have seen how Ashley the Egyptians abused them. Verse 10, it says, now go for I am sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. So that God made uh, Moses a deliverer, you know, transitioning from his birth into the hands of his adopted mother, 
and then him eventually becoming a deliverer for the children of Israelites uh, to, to deliver them from the hands of the Egyptians. So we see that that's a giant. I mean, we read about Moses as one of the giants in the Bible, and nobody would have thought that, you know, that was a path uh, it took for him to, you know, achieve greatness in, uh, as a child of God. And then uh, another major example, like we had initially uh, learned, is Esther as well. So if you go to the book of Esther, Esther 2, uh, verse 5 to 7. Esther 2, 5 to 7. Please, if you're there, feel free to, to read. Esther 2, verse 5 to 7. Esther 2, 5 to 7. In, yes. in Shushan, the citadel, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shemai, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Kish has been carried away from Jerusalem with the captives who had been captured by Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom the Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And Mordecai, and Mordecai brought up had um, Adessa, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was lovely and beautiful. When her father and mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. Um, I think we can see there uh, Queen Esther, how Queen Esther came into Mordecai's life. You know, uh, the Bible described her here as very beautiful, very lovely. Not just, I'm sure, not just physical beauty, but you know, there must have been some things that was seen in her at that time that our uncle could see. And he, and another portion that stood out to me also is that he took her into his family and he raised her as his own daughter. So that's the whole process of adoption. Like you, you take your, your child into your family and then you raise them like your own. You are not, you know, doing any preferential treatment, but you raise them as your own. So that's Esther there and how she came into Mordecai's life and how he also took her in and took care of her. So Esther later became a queen and influenced the deliverance of the Jewish people, as we know that, and then let's probably just read and then just to get a feel for, you know, our impact you know, uh, after, you know, transitioning from the face of adoption, you know how it is, uh, not being raised by your own parents, by somebody else, and then now becoming great even in the process. So let's go to the book of Esther 7, 6 to 10. Esther 7. Esther 7, 6 to 10. And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. So Haman was terrified before the king and queen. Then a king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine and went into the palace garden. But Haman stood before Queen Esther, pleading for his life, for he saw that evil was determined against him by the king. When the king returned from the palace garden to the place of the banquet of wine, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. Then the king said, Will he also assault the king while I am in the house? And as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Now, Habuna, one of the eunuchs, said to the king, Look, the gallows, 50 cubits high, which Haman made for Mordecai, who spoke good on the king's behalf, is standing at the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him on it. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. And the king's wrath was subsided. Hmm. Praise God. Can we also read um, chapter 8, 11? Verse 11. Yes. Esther 8, 11? Esther 8, 11. Okay. The king's decree gave the Jews in every city authority to unite to defend their lives. They were allowed to kill, slaughter, and annihilate anyone of any nationality or province who might attack them or their children and wives. 
and to take the property of their enemies. Praise God. Praise God. Um, in, in other, I think the, the bottom line here is that Esther became a queen and she, she influenced the deliverance of the Jewish people. I was trying to get to the specific verses that highlighted that, but the ones that we read hasn't done that. So if anybody has the specific verses, please definitely share in the chat so that people can read it at their leisure. So we'll go on to Eli. So Eli was another person who took custody of, of um, Carl, Samuel. We all know Samuel in the Bible. Uh, his mother had dedicated uh, him, even before he was born, to, she had pledged him to, to God. And so once the child was born, she handed him over to, to Samuel, or to Eli, who then raised him. I didn't even think of that concept as an adoption, but come to think of it, Eli raised him. And, you know, that was pretty much what the father would have done. So that's another example of adoption. If we went into the book of, let's go into the book of uh, Samuel, First Samuel 24 to 28. Book of First Samuel 24 to 28. Oh, do what's the verse, please? Uh, First Samuel 24. Uh, that's true. I'm just trying to see here. Do you by any chance have the man on you? I'm not sure. I think I do. I, I wrote the verses, but not the verse, uh, not the chapter, which is weird. Okay, so um, looking at it. One second. Just give me a second, please. Praise God. For Samuel 1. Yes. For Samuel, okay, for Samuel 1. So let's go to the book of For Samuel, chapter 1, verse 24 to 28. Okay, I will read it. So 1 Samuel 1, 24 to 28. And it goes, uh, one second. First, I can help you. Just... First Samuel 24, um, 1 Samuel 24 to 28. Okay. One to two, first Samuel 1, 24 to 28. Um, when the child was weaned, Hannah took him to the tabernacle in Shiloh. They brought along a three-year-old bull for the sacrifice and a basket of flour and some wine. After sacrificing the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. Sir, do you remember me? And Hannah asked, I am very, I'm the very woman who stood here several years ago praying to the Lord. I asked the Lord to give me this boy and he has granted my request. Now I am giving him to the Lord and he will belong to the Lord his whole life and they worship the Lord there. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that was Anna actually going through with the promise she made. So many of us will pledge and, you know, after the, it materializes, we forget who we've pledged. But in our case, she came back, brought the child to God, and Eli raised him. Same, so not only did he, you know, he got raised by this man of God, but he also became a prophet himself and a kingmaker. So if we went into the book of Samuel, First Samuel 16, 11 to 13. So First Samuel 16, 11 to 13. Um, and Samuel said to Jesse, are all these young men here? Then he said, there remains yet the youngest, and there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent mm -hmm. and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. Um, with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, and this is the one. 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the, in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I mean, I mean, we know how this process was. So that was when, this was when uh, Prophet Tamar was the one, was a prophet that went to the house of, uh, to David's family and started looking out and checking all the brothers and until he got to David and he was the one that anointed him. So I guess the main point here is this was a man that was dedicated to God, raised by Eli, an adopted son of Eli, so to speak, who then evolved into becoming a kingmaker. And so that's to let you know the possibilities that are there. Uh, you know, somebody who's raised by as an adopted child and then evolving and really fulfilling his purpose and, and greatness in life. Uh, another major example was Abraham. Uh, who raised um, El Eliezer, so we can go. So the son of the servant, who later became another, uh, Abraham's most trusted steward. To go into the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, we would find that reference there. All right. Um, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abraham said, Lord, Lord God, what will you give me? Seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abraham took, then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, no burn, no one burn in my house is my heir. Praise God. Thank you. So that was the steward there being mentioned because he was the most trusted. So I'm sure everything that uh, Abraham had at the time, assuming he didn't have a child, would have gone to that as steward. So another prime example and the most prominent one that we're all very familiar with is that of you know, Joseph uh, accepting Jesus as his own, even though he did not biologically conceive him. And along with Mary, uh, they raised a son that became the savior of the whole world. Uh, that's the reason why me and you are here today because of that child that Joseph adopted. So if we went into the book of Matthew 1, 18 to 21, the Bible reference will be there. Matthew. Um, Matthew 1, 18 to 21. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was, at, was as follows. After his mother, Mary, was betrothed to Joseph, before they, became, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. 20. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of Holy, is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call him, call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And you know, there's no there's no greater. So this is a man who took in a child who was in biological ease, in biologically ease. And that's Jesus Christ. And, and it just sort of reaffirms that uh, being a parent is not necessarily in, you know, the biological process of that conception. You can have a child, uh, not biologically, but, you know, and still be able to carry out that role in their life where they become great and they're able to fulfill their purpose in life. So I have just a few questions just to make sure that this is not... Um, me and brother Yinka kind of session, <laughs> just to open it up for people to engage. Uh, could you share any other biblical examples that you know of, uh, who are, you know, also children who have been, who were adopted? If you have any other addition to what we've talked about, please, please share. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I don't know whether to call it absorb, um, adoption per se, but um, when David um, heard that, that um, uh, um, Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, that um, Saul's grandson, was mm -hmm. alive, I mean, he kind of like um, took him in as his own. 
and fed him. And of course, till he died, he became, um, he used to eat at the table with King David. So I, could, I'm not, I don't know that it's called adoption, but I mean, it could be a form of adoption as well. By all means, Auntie, I think that's, a, that's an adoption. Because if you look at Samuel, I'm sure Samuel had a father. But, you know, Eli played the role of a, a parent in his life. So I think in the Bible, that's also sort of equivalent to an adoption. Thank you, Ma. Thank you for your contribution. So um, sure. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm not sure if um, I missed that part, but I, I believe Jesus Christ was adopted as well mm -hmm. by Joseph because that was not his biological dad. But I'm not sure if sure. that was yeah, I just talked about it, but thanks for, for mentioning that again. Yeah, and I also think um, Abraham taking on Lot, his nephew, mm -hmm. um, as he left his father's land to Canaan, on the way to Canaan, that whole journey, and even when Lot was um, captured, going to fight for him and um, delivering him from that. So I, even though they separated, I still think he took him on as a son. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's 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 definitely true because I think that moment, the moment that you play a parental role in somebody's life, I mean, you can, you know, maybe in our own new, in a new day terms of adoption, it might not necessarily, you know, follow that term, but I think biblically that lends uh, that thought process to adoption as well. Uh, is adoption the will of God? Do we think is the will of God? For me, I do think it is. I mean, just based off of all of the biblical references we've seen, we've seen Jesus Christ, which is the most prime example. And if uh, all of that process did not work out between Mary and Joseph, you know, I don't know what the context would have been. So it's for me, I think it's uh, it's godly and it has its biblical roots and we've gone through a few of them. So I will jump quickly into the outline B. So what is the reason, or what are the reasons for child adoption? There are a few reasons that uh, are listed here by the manual. So every child is expected to be settled into a home. I mean, we've all grown up in our biological homes, hopefully. I'm not sure if everybody sort of falls into that context, but most of us here have had the privilege of growing up in our own homes. And we know what that feels like. A lot of us um, had great experience or great experiences doing that. You know, we talk about our parents and how loving and how they pour so much love into us. So uh, every child out there definitely does this deserve or is expected to have that home uh, experience, to be able to settle into a home and, you know, uh, feel that love growing up. So let's go into the book of 1 Kings 11.10. Book of 1 Kings 11, verse 20. First Kings 11, verse 20. Then the sister of Taphins bore him Gunibat, his son, whom Taphins wind in um, Pharaoh's house, and Gunibat was in Pharaoh's house among the sons of Pharaoh. Mm. So in other words... This child was not a child of Pharaoh, but he had the opportunity of growing up in that environment. So again, it lends our, to our topic. It helps the child so in order to receive proper training and discipline. So in the case of or the instance of um, Moses, Moses was born by a different mother, but you know, was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. And then he got the opportunity to grow up in that environment to receive proper training and proper discipline that then eventually helped him to, to deliver uh, the, the Israelites from the, hand of the, uh, from, from the hand of the Egyptians. So that's the necessity that, you know, that child or children must go through that process for them to receive necessary training they need to, to, to achieve their purpose in life. The second point here says child adoption is calling for some of uh, multiple. So it's calling for some to multiply their impact as parents. Uh, and, and it could help them, it could help these children to feel their purpose in life. So we, we talked about the instance of Esther. So this was Esther who had lost her parents. And then she got an opportunity to be adopted by uh, Mordecai. 
who then raised her as his own. So it wasn't, you know, there's no the disparity between the, ah, okay, this is not my, this is my child or the child of my brother or whatever, but he raised her like his own child. And as a result, she, we know she was able to fulfill her purpose. She became a queen. She became an advocate for the Jewish folks and she was able to do great, great, great and mighty things. Same thing in the case of Jesus Christ, raised by Mary and Joseph, evolved and became this huge person who's changed their lives and keeps changing our different lives that are coming up even till date. Uh, and we can just sort of look at those instances. Same thing for Samuel. Samuel had this huge impact, he became a kingmaker over time, fulfilling his life's purpose by, well, for, just because he had like a parent or parents were, that were able to sort of nurture and bring them up uh, so that they can fulfill that purpose. I think that's the purpose of parenting. It's not necessarily, it has to be biological or not, but you know, what the purpose is raise a child up so that they can fulfill God's purpose for their lives. And this examples that we've read today uh, has shown that. So it can be the opportunity for waiting couple to have their own children. So that's another reason for adoption. So some people have been waiting and uh, they are going through some infertility issues. Adoption is one of the ways uh, that is not for everybody, but for anybody who's open to it, uh, to also have a child to nurture as their own. Um, another, so another major reason why people adopt is those who adopt take good care. So, so those who adopt and take good care of their children will receive that benefit, divine blessing that will come to them, just like you know. So if, you, if you're serving God the way you ought to serve God, there's, there are some blessings that will materialize in your life. But again, in the case of adoption here, if, for example, we're not doing uh, or not fulfilling God's purpose, then, you know, there's a repercussion there. So let's look at the book of Matthew 10, verse 42. Matthew 10, verse 42. Just to back it up with scriptures. Matthew 10, 42. So Matthew 10, 42 says here. Oh, I can. Okay. okay, go ahead, please. Ma Matthew 10, 42. Yes. And if you give even a cup of cold water to one of at least of the least of my followers, you surely be rewarded. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it. So there's a reward for everything that is done. So for people who adopt, there's a huge reward. I remembered an example that comes to mind was one of the, um, I think one of the musical shows that I saw and this nurse had adopted about five children, a nurse. So it just opened my eyes to see that, wow, it's not necessarily just the wealthy people who can do this. A nurse who probably earns under $200,000 a year adopted five kids. And these were kids that had like traumatic experiences. You know, Some of them had, you know, Down syndrome. Some of them, you know, their parents were very, maybe they were on drugs and things like that. And he adopted five and he has one of his own making six. So it just opened my mind to the possibility of how one can really impact people's lives positively. So I have a few more questions for you as well. So what are the other reasons for child adoption? And um, anybody just jump in. Are there other reasons that come to your mind why people adopt? Or oh, better still, maybe just share your experiences. If you have any personal experience or you know of people who've done it, and you know, there are one or two things to learn from that experience for everyone here. So either any question that pops to your mind, feel free to, to share. Oh, do sorry if well, I missed this, I, oh, go ahead. I think a very good example that we find in scripture is the relationship between Paul and Timothy. Mm -hmm. All through the accounts in the New Testament, I do not recall any mention of Timothy's father, but, mm -hmm. uh, Definitely, Apostle Paul was the father figure in his life. So, yeah. so sometimes it's not even just about physical adoption. Even spiritual adoption goes a long way to shape people's destiny. Over. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, it's it's pretty crucial. There are so many people who act as parents uh, on different levels, but you know they're not necessarily being called that. So, thank you for mentioning that, Portia. You're going to say something. 
No, I was saying, like, I, I, sorry if I missed this, you mentioned this earlier, but, you know, one of the reasons that people adopt is just having, because they have that heart of compassion, just, you know, wanting to help someone else, help them, you know, maybe um, um, achieve goals. You know, if someone is adopting someone with um, someone that, if their parents were on drugs, you know, you're adopting them as your own and you're sort of raising them to become better than their parents. So you have that heart of um, compassion. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, I, I totally can resonate with that because I remember growing up with um, my mom's fellowship uh, members' kids. And I think one of the reasons why my mom did was she had lost her husband and she had like six six kids that she was looking out for. And to think that my mom would take them in, I was like, you don't even have the means. But she was like, no, I don't have the means, but this woman does need the help. And she brought those kids, uh, those, uh, kids to her home and they pretty much became our siblings. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah. And they're doing great today. So it's amazing. Yeah, um, I was going to add that to that. It's definitely the helping aspect of things that even sometimes um, you may have like after giving birth to all your own kids, your biological kids, and it's just the like seeing people in need and trying to help them. Um, and that, you know, you brought us in mom when she helped those um, you know, different women who were struggling with, you know, just taking care of their own kids. So, and then adopting, you know, those kids was really, you know, helpful for that woman and lifted up our own burdens and then, you know, just in turn blessed our own family. So I think it's just, you know, definitely helping other people in need. Yeah, thank you so much, Nike, for adding that. And it's, it's, there's always an opportunity to help. I don't know if there's anybody have any other experiences that you want Praise to Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think as well, it's in, a lot of people go through adopting also to deal with their own internal biases. And this is what I mean. When Apostle Paul was writing, he was saying that you who is a Jew, you are not compelled to live like a Greek. Why are you compelling the Greeks to live like Jews? When there was internal crisis in India between Christians and Muslims, and they were both killing each other. One of the things that Mahatma Gandhi was recommending to some people is that if you want to do a real atonement, you who is an Hindu, adopt a Muslim kid, but bring him up as Muslim. While you remain Hindu, you will have dealt with your own internal biases. And so sometimes we pick people, even in our careers, who sometimes are the opposite of us, who totally have a different orientation, a different attitude, a different background, a different, to also help us to be able to tolerate and build ourselves. So in that process, we're helping people, but at the same time, we're helping ourselves. And that's also very important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for mentioning that. I can imagine having to adopt a Muslim child when you're Hindu, and it, it will break so many barriers of, oh, I can't deal with these people, and so many other things that people might be saying. So it's, that's really, really, really deep. Thank you, sir, for sharing that. Any other contributions? Thank you, everyone. So we'll, just to recap what the key takeaways were. So we have talked about child adoption should not be seen as an option only meant for couples dealing with infertility. I mean, we've read it here and we've gone through those sessions that, you know, it could be for us to deal with our internal biases, you know, maybe culturally, there are some certain things that we're dealing with. It's an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to help out the Muslim kid, even though I'm a Christian. Um, it's an opportunity for us to, to bless children uh, and bring them into a, a, a setting where they're able to achieve their purpose in life. So great giants uh, in the scriptures like Moses, Queen Esther, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, as we all know, we're all adopted. Uh, that should open our minds to see what's possible as an adopted child. Even us as Christians, we're adopted children of God as well, too. And uh, we know the many, many, many blessings that we enjoy, uh, for that relationship that we have with God. To so those who are not ready to treat adopted children like their biological children should not dare or venture into it. If we look at the book of Proverbs 21.13, that backs it up. So in conclusion... Uh, as God adopts those who receive Christ as their savior into his spiritual family, we encourage to pray.
prayerfully consider adopt, adopting children into our families. And I pray that God will give us that strength, the resources, and you know, the ability to be able to do it, not necessarily by formalized means, but any other means possible to influence people's lives so that they can achieve their purpose. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, eternal King of glory, we thank you for the opportunity to gather at your feet this morning. Thank you for teaching us about adoption. Uh, it's a concept that we all know of, and I'm sure a lot of us definitely can continue to learn more about. I pray, Lord Jesus, that that spirit that you gave to those, uh, to Eli, uh, to Mordecai, and those in the Bible that we've learned about today, that you gave them the ability to be able to take on the responsibility of other children. Father, we pray that you will bestow such grace upon us this morning that we'll not only just think about ourselves and raise our own children alone, that will you give us the ability to be able to think of being, uh, having an impact in the life of children who might be out there, who might need this nurturing, who might need us to be able to achieve their purpose in life, even in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh Lord Jesus, that for every adopted child all across the globe, that it is well with them, that everything, it is, that it is well with their soul and their spirit, that God, you will give them the grace even to achieve their purpose in life in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord Jesus, that there will be more people willing to come in and take those who might be needing uh, a family to be able to achieve this purpose in their life, even in the name of Jesus. For adventure, there are also children who have been adopted and have been abused or have been going through one torture or the other. We pray for these children this morning, O oh Lord Jesus, that you will rescue them, that you will help them, that you, the God that helped, you, the God that saves, you, the God that really goes and do things that are beyond and that any human being cannot do, will go forth and take care of this one, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. As we go into the service, O oh Lord, go with us. We pray that, it, that every word, every ministration will bless our lives richly, even in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we are prayed. Amen and amen. Too much, oh, too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Oh, Jesus, you love me too much, oh, too much, oh. Too much, oh, excess love, oh. Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh, too much, oh, excess love, oh. Your love to over us is too much, oh, God. Father, we worship you. Jehovah, we exalt you. We bless you, we honor you, we adore you, we magnify you, we praise you, we bless you, we exalt you, we extol you, we lift you up on high because you alone deserve all the praise, you alone deserve all the glory, you alone deserve all the honor, we exalt your name, we bless you, we honor you, we thank you, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Thank you for another beautiful Sunday, Thank you though for the brand new week. Thank you for what you have in store for us. Thank you for what you have already done. Thank you for what you are doing already. Thank you for what you will do. Thank you for the glorious future that we have in you. Thank you because this week is going to be great. Thank you, it's a glorious week. Thank you, it's a week filled with your presence and testimonies. Thank you for what you have done, oh God. May your name be glorified forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty name we have worshiped. Can we just begin to thank God for what he has done for you personally? Thank God for what he is doing in your life. Thank God for what the Lord has perfected in your life. Thank God for the, what the Lord is doing. Thank him for what he has done. Glorify him this morning. Let the Lord hear you thank him. Let the thank begin to flow up to the heaven. Let God hear you particularly thanking God. From my mouth, oh God, from my heart, I am grateful. Daddy, I thank you. I glorify you. I bless you. I honor you. I adore you. I thank you, oh God. 
Thank you for mountains that you move out of my way last week. Thank you for mountains that you made, be, be, that became plain last week. Thank you for valley that you filled up, oh God. Thank you for taking my feet out of my clay and setting us upon a solid rock. Oh, thank you for every day of last week that we went out and we returned back home safely. Thank you for being faithful. Father, thank you for your word that you brought to pass in our lives. Oh, thank you for my husband. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my siblings and our parents. Thank you for the church of God. Thank you for all of my friends. Oh, thank you for my associates. Thank you for the people around me. Thank you for every customer that walked into my business last week. Thank you, Jehovah God Almighty. Thank you there was no accident. Thank you that we did not involve in any ugly incident. Thank you, Jehovah, for proving that you are God and you are alive. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for the ones that I'm still waiting for. Thank you for the ones that you have already done. Thank you for the manifestation of your promises. Oh, thank you for lifting us up in this family. Thank you for just lifting us up in this family of God. Thank you, oh God, for new jobs. Thank you for open doors. Thank you for upliftment. Thank you for others. Thank you for increase. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. There is nothing that we received last week that was not from you. There is nothing that we were able to do last week that was not you that helped us. Thank you for the assignment of our various jobs. Thank you, Jehovah, for giving us wisdom on how to do it. Holy Spirit, thank you for being there all the time. Thank you for the nuggets. Thank you for the correction. Thank you for the chastisement. Thank you, Jehovah, for the, for the reminder. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for being there all the time. Thank you for never leaving or forsaking us. Thank you because we are not like orphans. Thank you, Jehovah God, that every news that we received last week was great. Great news. Thank you, Jesus, that none died. Thank you, Jehovah God, that we did not have to visit anybody in the hospital. What else can we not thank you for? You have done every single thing, and it was indeed marvelous in our sight, and we give you all the praise for it. There is nothing that we were able to do last week that you did not help us to do. Thank you for helping us to shut our mouth when we need to. Thank you for opening our mouth when we need to talk, when we need to witness, when we need to pray, when when, when we did not even know what the devil was doing, you woke us up at the middle of the night and you said it is time for you to fire prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because we would not have known. We don't know the plan of the devil, but you, our God, you know, ever ready, never sleep nor slumber. Thank you, Jesus. To have you, to know you is the greatest thing ever. We are very privileged to have you as our God. We are very privileged to have you as our leader, the one leading us. We are grateful, oh God. Take all the glory. Take all the grace. For we are praying in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Very quickly, we are going to pray from the book of Zechariah, Zechariah this morning, chapter 4. I'm going to read from, no, 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 from, from verse 4 and verse 7 to verse 9. Praise the Lord. Zechariah 4, verse 7 to verse 9. Who are thou, O mighty mountains, before Zerubbabel? You will become level ground. King James said you will become a plain. And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hand of Zerubbabel had laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. I'm sure we are familiar with this Bible passage. passage. I want us to just pray like two or three prayers from it, and that will be it. It says, that there, there, it, there was a shout of, of grace. And um, another version says, bless it, bless it, O Lord. It is the grace of God that makes mountain to move. It is the grace of God that makes mountain to become a level ground. It is the blessing of God that takes us out of the miracle and sets us upon the solid rock. It is the blessings of God that make it rich and no sorrow is added. It is the grace of God that 
uplift us up. It is the grace of God. I don't know if you're already experiencing a lifting because God cannot lie. In this month of lifting, if you are already experiencing the lifting, that means you are riding on the wave. I want us all to tap into the wave. There is the stirring of the water. Unless you tap into it, it's not taking you anywhere. There is the grace that is needed to be able to ride on the wave. There is the grace that is needed to be able to get to the height God has created. I want you to ask for that grace this morning. Brethren, I want you to pray for that grace to take you to the place where God has created for you. I want you to ask for the grace, the grace of God that tabernacle and make me to tabernacle and make me to get to where God has destined me to be. The blessing that God will bless me. The speaking of words that he will speak into my life that will take me to that place. That will take me to the place of lifting. That place that God has promised. The place that he has created for me. I ask for the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to make it. The grace to walk in it. The grace to make it. The grace to enjoy it. In the name of Jesus, I walk in grace. I cannot do it by myself. I don't know who to take me there. But your grace can. I ask for that grace in the name of Jesus. I ask for the grace in the name of Jesus. I don't want to miss my step. I want to ride on the wave. I don't want to be swallowed by the storm. I don't want to be swallowed by the wave. I want to ride on the wave in the name of Jesus Christ. All the grace of God. I know there is the staring of the water. I ride on this wave, oh God. I move to the next level and to the next and to the next and to the next in the name of Jesus Christ. All that grace of God. Oh, but don't Take me over, take me over, take me to that place, oh God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, take me there, take me there. Holy Spirit, I ask for the grace. I don't know how to do it, but your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. The grace that you have made available, I tap into it. I walk in it. I dwell in it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take chance. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' almighty name, we are praying. I don't know who is already riding on the way. If you are seeing something happening, if in your life you are seeing a sign of a lifting, if in your life you, you something that you have applied for long before now, it doesn't matter how little it is. Even if you have not applied for something and all of a sudden they are, they are inviting you to apply for something, it means the wave has turned in your favor. Go and do much more. Enjoy this wave. Just ride on it. Just, just take the opportunity. Don't let it go away. Because it's the time and the chance that happened to them all. I want you to pray. Two more prayers and we are done. The second one is, Jehovah God, in this time, whatever thing that I have laid my hands on to do, it does not matter how small it is, my hand has started. The grace of a finisher I received this morning in the name of Jesus. We have all started year 2020. We started this year well. We started it with the grace of a beginner. But the grace to finish this year, we receive in the name of Jesus. The grace to to finish well, the grace to finish good, the grace to finish excellently. We receive in the name of Jesus the grace of the finisher, the grace to finish well, the grace to finish this year well, the grace to dance the dance of victory at the end of this year. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Every project that we have embarked upon the beginning of this year, the grace to finish it, the grace to do it, the grace to finish it, the grace to do it, the grace to finish well, not just do it, but Finish it excellently in the name of Jesus. We receive in Jesus' name. Father Lord Jehovah, we thank you for that grace to go to the next level. The grace to finish your 2020 well, not in the grave, but celebrating victoriously in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace of a finisher, the grace to finish every um, uh, um, journey that we have embarked upon, whether it is financially, whether it is buying a new house, whether it is in any way or any form. The the grace to finish it, the grace to finish it, we receive it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. I sense in my spirit that God is here this morning. God is here this morning. And you see, when he comes, he comes with loads of goodies for us. But sometimes when the word is about to come, our hearts begin to do 360. 
begin to buy and sell. That's when you remember something because nobody is seeing you. That's when you begin to do many other things. I want you to command your body, command your spirit, command your soul to be here. That even as the word will come, that the word will profit me. The word will bring about deliverance. The word will minister to me. As the word of God will come this morning, I will be ministered to. You will be ministered to. The word of God will not just fall on the ground. We will partake of the blessing of the word. Every word that will proceed out of the servant of God this morning, it will be directly from the mouth of God that the Lord will use him mightily as a mouthpiece. The Lord will use them like his own mouth and he will speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ that our hearts be prepared to receive. In the name of Jesus, the blessing that God has brought with is that accompanying the word of God this morning. We will all partake of it. I command my body, my my spirit and my soul be attentive listen and receive even as the word will come and your servants that you are prepared to use this morning use him mightily for your glory and let it not be his word but let it be the word directly from your throne room of grace and let all of our lives not remain the same for we are praying in jesus almighty name amen praise the lord Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe that prayer is for each and every one of us. And I pray that the Lord will do that in which he wants to do in each of our lives today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercies which have seen us to this time. We thank you for your mercies that has remained with us. It is by your mercies that we are not confused. Even when we cross the line, Father, Lord God, you have been before us and you have treated us. You have uh, reached out to us, Father, in your mercy. Lord, we are grateful, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for that which you are going to tell us today. We thank you for your grace upon us, O oh Lord. Father, be thou glorified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the end of the day, Father, Lord God, we ask, O Lord, that your name will be glorified. I will really ask us to bless your name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. We give you adoration, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I beg of you, please. Can I please see your faces? It's good to know who we are fellowshipping with. Is it possible, Pastor Adisa? Let me see your face. Um, yes. We have not put the up. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, I can see the neology. Day. Thank you very much. Sister Portia, yes, God bless you. Sister Daniel, Sister Lola, yes, God bless you the way you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Brother, God bless you. Sister Deborah, Brother Femi, Aremu, God bless you. It's good to see you all. Sister Onipa Day, the Lord is your strength. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Oniko, I am your just Sister Atemi, you have put on powder. It's the same you have not put on makeup. Everybody has put on makeup. Sister Odoaya, um, God bless you. Um, everybody, God bless you. It's good to see. It's good to see these smiling faces, brother. Brother, brother, shall I desire to see you? God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is well with you, sister. Praise. Yes. Good to see you. Good to see you, everybody. It is well with you all. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a, it's a great privilege for, for me to, uh, to share with us today uh, briefly. Uh, I tell you it's going to be brief. Uh, it's because uh, it's just a couple of things that the Lord is laying in my heart for every one of us to understand. And the title of this message, if or anything like, at all, it's going to be putting you in remembrance. 
I repeat, putting you in remembrance. And I want to start by asking us to look at a couple of scriptures. That is actually what we'll be doing today, looking at scriptures. The first one is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. Please, as much as possible, uh, uh, at me, just focus on these scriptures. I want, that is what I want everybody to see, much more than anything else. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says that, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Nourish up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. The key word there is that if thou put the brethren in remembrance of this thing. I'm going to be asking, I'm going to be putting us in remembrance of a couple of things. Also, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14 says, Of these things, Put them in remembrance. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the year. So of these things, put them in remembrance. The Lord calls us specifically to put you in remembrance of a couple of things. And I pray that once that remembrance comes, because these are things that you have actually heard before, but these are things that you have also, that you have known before. These are things that have been with you before. We just want to put you in remembrance. I pray that the purpose of that remembrance will be met in your life today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going on by putting a stress on it. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, 2 Peter chapter 1, Verse 12, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 12. The Bible says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. Though you know them and be established in the present truth. Though you know them and be established in the present truth. Verse, uh, verse 13 says, Yeah, I think it's me. As long as I am in this tabernacle, to steer you up by putting you in remembrance. To steer you up by putting you in remembrance. There is a place of remembrance there. Putting you in remembrance. And lastly, what that is, I'll, I'll look at Jude chapter 1, verse 5. Jude chapter 1, verse 5. And by this, I hope every one of us will understand that there is a necessity. There is, it, it is putting you in remembrance is a command which every congregation must, must go towards, must go to. So every pastor, every preacher, they have a duty to put you in remembrance of a number of things. Jude chapter 1 verse 5, Jude chapter 1 verse 5 says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, Afterward, destroy them that believe not. You need to remember that. That it, it, God, you already know this story, but God is asking us to remember. Remember the story that you already know. One of which is that the, God saved the people out of the land of Egypt. And then, for those who did not believe, despite that, he destroyed them. I hope. And I pray that every one of us will believe today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the grace to believe the word of God will be, will be released upon each and every one of us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to put you in remembrance. But you want to ask, what is remembrance? All the time um, in the Bible, you see severally that, oh, and God remembered Hannah. And God remembered Sarah. And God remembered this person. And God remembered that person. What does it mean? Is it because God has forgotten? No. God does not have an ability to forget. God cannot forget. He did not forget. And he will never forget. But 
When they say that God remembers, it means that that particular issue comes into its focus for action. That means that that particular issue, he has brought it, that is the issue that he wants to deal with right now. So I want to pray for you that may the Lord remember you for good in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that when your matter comes before him, when God, when they say God remember you, that I'm going to focus on this issue right now because I'm going to resolve it. I remember one of my uncles way back. There are times that he would have forgotten something then. At some point, he said, I will deal with this matter today. The way he looks at it is like, oh, maybe that person has been doing some deal and been doing this. He said, today, that mercy of that person has spoiled today. Oh, go ahead, back He said, I will deal with this matter today. This person has been owing me and he has not paid me all this way. Today, whatever that person has been using to make me forget or to not focus on it, today, that particular issue, that particular mercy has spoiled. That's what he will say. Because the man will say that I'm focusing on this issue today. I'm going to deal with this matter today. So for every one of us who have one issue or the other, that you are asking God, that you are drawing God's attention, I pray that they will come before his attention today. He will focus on it, and then it will be said concerning that issue. It will be said concerning, his, concerning you that God, remember, by virtue of this message today, I pray for each and every one of us, the Lord will remember you. For good today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is so remembrance is that it is what fills the thought of your heart. You already know it, but it is essential that at some point in time you are reminded, you remember to know that you want this, you focus on that issue. Remembrance is key. I want us to understand. But also closely aligned with remembrance is that forgetfulness. It's also key. I want to say, even though we call it put you in remembrance, there are certain things that I just want us to know that don't forget. It is the same thing as don't forget. We always ask God to remember us, but we ourselves, we need to remember a number of things, especially when God says, I put my people in remembrance of this. And there are three sets of people that I want to speak to. Three sets of people. Um, well, we have a coronavirus pandemic. I know it has affected people in different ways. Even apart from Corona, at any point in time, even when they say that things are going on well in the country, in the city, everything, there is still somebody that maybe that is not the case. So we all have different, diff there are different ways in which God is dealing with us. There are different experiences that we have. So, for example, I want to speak especially to everybody who's doing well. I want to put you in remembrance of a number of things. There are certain things that God has said. That so for those of us that we have it easy, or that we have it easier than the other, you know that you are fortunate, you know that you have been blessed in some way or the other. There is, so, there is quite a number of things for which you are thanking God for. There is quite a number of things that you can point to and say, ah, this is the faithfulness of God. There are a couple of things for which you can point to and say, ah, I count my blessings. You are the one that I want to talk to today. I want to put you in remembrance of a number of things. In your blessings, in your happiness, in your prosperity, in your glory, in your honor. While you are still enjoying that privilege. Even in that, I want you to remember a number of things. And you see, we're just going to be going through certain scriptures. I don't need there are these scriptures as well that I don't need to expatiate on them. I just want you to remember. The first set of people is those who are doing well. Then there is also a second set of people, those who are not doing well. If things are not going well with you, you are the one that I want to talk to this morning. You are the one that I'm referring to. Why am I saying that? Is that even though things are not going well, things seem to be in a flux. Things seem not not the way in which you want it. Prayers does not it doesn't appear as if prayers are being answered. Ah, I want you to know a couple of things that ah, there are evil in some ways that God has been merciful to you. There are things that I want you to remember, even in your lowly state, even what appears to be your lowly state. I want you to remember, no matter how bad the situation is, I want you to put you in certain remembrance. 
Then there are some of us, the third set of people, those who are from C concert, that they are somewhere in between. They ask you how far, and then you say, it is so, so. There is need for you to remember a number of things so that you know how our God are, is dealing with us. And I'm, I'm just going to be saying, rather than saying that putting you remember, I'm just saying, don't forget. Number one, don't forget that life is a gift. Life is borrowed. Life is a gift which has an expiry date. Many, there is, um, all of, most of you have such that um, you, are, you grew up in the urban areas, you don't know most of this. There are some trucks, some trailers which, which ply the rural area of Nigeria. There are many, many inscriptions at the back of them. Some people will say, some of these, some of these inscriptions will say, be careful, many have gone. Meaning that you better know that you are not better than all of those who have gone. Life is a borrowed gift. It has an expiry date. Remember that it is God who gives that gift of life. What is called the gift of life, it is God who gives it. The Bible says that it is by his mercy that we are not consumed. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, and I told you it's just a couple of scriptures that I just want to quote for us, for us to just remember that don't forget Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. The Bible says that, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Please don't forget it is because God has breathed into your life. God has breathed into that thing that you call, you call body. That is why it has become, that's why it is called your life. And you have become a living soul. Can you imagine if the act just stops for one minute, the individual is perhaps gone? Don't forget, the life that you have is not your own, it is borrowed. It is borrowed. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 5. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 5. I want to buttress that point. The Bible says that, but as one was filling a beam, you remember the case of um, Elisha, as one was filling a beam, the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was born. Why? Your son day, you are still going to give up this life. To the person that gave it to you. Life is a borrowed gift. It's just a gift for you to use from the just like that axe head. That axe head fell. And the man said, Ah, it was borrowed because he knows that he will still need to give it back to the owner someday. Brethren, I want to remind you that we are like clay. Life is short. Life is short. Life has an expiry day. In Psalm 90, verse 12, Psalm chapter 90, verse 12, the Bible says that, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our acts unto wisdom. Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our acts unto wisdom. Psalm 89, verse 47, Psalm 89, verse 47 says, Remember how short my time is. Wherefore hast thou made all men in vain? Please remember, bear it in mind that you will not live this life forever. Life is a borrowed gift. Someday you will need to give up that life. But very, very closely aligned to that. It's not just that you will give up the life to the owner, it is that you will give account someday for this life that you have in your hands. Someday you will have to give an account. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. Romans chapter 14, verse 12. The Bible says that so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. There is always a period of accounting. We are getting to the end of the year right now. There will be some time that end in your office, in whatever they say, oh, we need to review the end of the year. We need to review what have we performed the year, corona or no corona. 
how are we performed? There is a time that we need to do an account. We need to know. We put the pluses somewhere. We put the negatives somewhere. We know what the balance is. You will give account concerning your life someday. Every one of us shall give account someday. Everyone, everyone will give account personally. Not your husband will not give account for you. Your wife will not be the one to give account for you. In neither your parents or your brother or anybody, you will give account someday. If God has given you 10 talents and you have used only two there, you will give account someday. If God has given you one talent and you buried it to say, I don't worry, I will give it up, mm, you will give account one day. Every one of us will give account personally. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. I'll keep talking about just one thing, that life is a borrowed gift that has an expiry date. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. The Bible says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, I'm not the one that said it. Just remember, I'm here to remind you. The Lord said that we should put you in remembrance concerning a, 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 concerning a couple of things. Just know that God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 9 also says, Rejoice, O young man in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thy heart, and in the sight of thy eyes. But know that, that for all these things, God will bring thee into judgment. I want to pray for each and every one of us, that the judgment of God will be kind to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray that when God will be giving judgment, he will do it smilingly knowing that you have done well in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the first thing that I want to remind us about. Number two, the first one is to say, don't forget that life is a borrowed gift with an expiry date. The second one is to remind us, is to put us into remembrance. Don't forget the benefits of God. Please, don't forget. Don't forget the benefits of God in whatever state in which you are. If you are rich, if you are doing good, if you are doing well, please don't forget the benefits of God. If you are not doing well, even there, where you are, there is something that is there is something you can you can point to that you realize that God is giving you benefits. Psalm 68, verse 19. Psalm chapter 68, verse 19. The Bible says that blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. There is some benefits that you have, even in your lowly estate. If you are good, there is benefit. If things are bad, there is benefit. And in Psalm 103, verse 2, Psalm 103, verse 2, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. If you are not careful, the benefits can be wasted. If you are not careful, the benefits can be wasted. Anything that you don't appreciate, you will lose it. I'll give you the example, like Eli, like Esau, like Samson. Anything that you don't appreciate, you are in peril of losing it. Please, don't forget the benefits of God. If you don't realize that there are benefits, if God withdraws it, I pray that you don't, you, you don't wait until God withdraws it before you will know that it will benefit. Please, don't forget. Let me just give you the example of Esau. Esau, as you, as you see in Genesis chapter 25, verse 32. Genesis chapter 25, verse 32. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? As at that time, he was like, Well, the birthright is nothing. He forgot that yeah, there is a lot of benefit that comes with the birthright. Now forward, let us fast forward in the New Testament. The New Testament writer was writing and he said, and he said in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 to 17. I will just read it for you. 
in Hebrews, the New Testament was writing, when they were when they were looking at the case of those who forgot their benefit, who forgot the benefits of God. They mentioned the case of peace especially. And the Bible says there that in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 16 to 17, say that lest there be any fornicator or a profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. He sold his birthright. And in verse 17, the Bible says there, I just listen very carefully, say that, for he know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Because of this, so it's very, very important when you are talking about the benefits of God, the benefits that we get, the benefits of his birthright. He said, oh, what does it matter? Let me just say it. And he sold his birthright. Thereafter, several years after, when he wanted it back, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, when he wanted to reap the benefits of that particular blessing that was in his hand, the Bible says that he was rejected. Even though he repented, even though he repented with tears, even though he was crying, the Bible says that even though he sought it carefully with tears, but as, as, as at that time, there was no need anymore. Please, my brother, bring it into, into remembrance today. I put down in remembrance today. Please don't forget. Don't forget the benefits of God. Because we will require it of you one day. There will be a day in which you will realize that it is benefit. I pray that you will not forget in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number three. There is this thing that they tell us when we were young. Is a saying which everybody, every child knows. They will tell you, tell when you are going to school or when you are going anywhere, they will say, don't forget the, the son of whom you are absent. They will say, don't forget the child of whom you are. So that people don't say uh, they, are, they are problem with gender issues or anything. So don't forget the child of whom you are. Don't forget the child of whom you are. And the question is, you are going to be asking, whose child are you? Whose child are you? Psalm chapter 95, verses 3 to 6. Psalm 95, verses 3 to 6. The Bible says, For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all God. In his hand are the deep places of the heart. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. That is the person who owes you. That is the person that you need to constantly remember that you are the child of that person. That is God. Whose child are you? You are a child of God. Remember God. Remember that you have God. Remember that you have the backing of God concerning you all the time. So if you remember that you have the backing of God, there is nothing that comes before you that you don't have any confidence to face. And that's why, the, that's why uh, Job said that, I know that my Redeemer lives. Remember that you are God. Remember that you are a child of God. It is something that gives you confidence, but at the same time, it also comes with a bit of responsibility. There is a way that the child of God should be. So act like a child of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible says that, remember now that I created on the days of the youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw near, draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Please remember the days of thy youth. Remember the Creator in the days of thy youth. Please always have it in mind. I put you in remembrance today. Remember thy Creator. Psalm 77, verse 11. Psalm 77, verse 11. I just speak all of these scriptures just to remind you. Just to put you in remembrance, Psalm 77 verse 11 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely, I will remember thy wonders of old. Brethren, please, I put you in remembrance. Please, remember the works of the Lord. Remember what God has done for you. Remember how merciful God has been to you. The psalmist says here that surely I will remember thy wonders of old. Is there any wonder that God performed in your life in times past? Please, remember today. 
if you remember, if you are put in remembrance of such things, and that is what will be guiding your step, you will not get it wrong. I pray that you will not get it wrong in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, the Bible also says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that given the power to get well. Remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that given the power to get well. If you have will, it is he that gave you power to have that will. That he may establish his covenant, which is swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. If you have any wealth, if you have any wealth of money, wealth of experience, wealth of knowledge, wealth of intellect, wealth of peace, wealth of miracles, it is God. It is please always bear that in mind. I'm putting you in remembrance today. That is number three. I go to number four. And this is very, very important. Remember the word of God. I plead with you, please, don't forget the word of God. In everything that you do, the word of God, ah, please don't forget the word of God. Luke chapter 24, verse 8. Luke chapter 24, verse 8. The Bible says there that, and they remembered its word. That is the one that is most important there. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 3, say, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come again as a thief, and thou shalt not know what I will come upon thee. The most important part of it is remember how thou hast received, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. Please, whatever word has been given to you, and many words have been put into your life. I know that in this assembly, for example, every time there's one word or the other that is being sent to me, many words have been put, they have been sown into you. Please, let these words germinate. Let it bear fruit. And I pray that you will hold fast to this word and as, as necessary, you will repent concerning them in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, the Lord was speaking with Joshua directly. God was talking to Joshua and he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosper, and then thou shalt have good success. It's loaded. The first thing is that this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. That is, it, we're talking about the book. We're talking about the word of God. But the real issue there, which God is saying, is that it shall not depart out of thy mouth. So the word of God, you must make sure that it is in your mouth all the time. Make sure that you are speaking the word of God all the time. This book of the Lord, that is the word of God, shall not depart out of thy mouth. You need to continue, continue to remember the word of God in every situation in which you are in. And you need to constantly confess what the word of God is concerning you. You need to remember all the time, confessing, let it not depart out of thy mouth. And continue to say, yes, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my shield. I am above only, I am not beneath. I'm a champion, I am above only, I am a winner. You need to constantly Speak the word. That is what the Bible is saying that it shall not depart out of thy mouth. Then, apart from that, apart from you speaking of it with him all the time, say that you shall meditate on it. Please, the word of God, I mean, you have heard of this before. I'm just putting you in remembrance that don't let the word of God depart out of thy mouth and continue to meditate on it all the time. Meditating on it so that you can do what the word says. Because when you do that, the Bible says then that thou shalt make thy way prosper. It is not that God will make you prosper. When you have this word in your mouth, when you are speaking it, when you are meditating on it, when you are doing according to what the word is saying, then automatically you yourself, you, are, you have your destiny in your heart. You are the one that will make your own way prosperous and you shall have good success. Why? 
Don't forget the word of God. Remember the word of God all the time. And number five, I hope I'm making good progress. Number five is that don't forget where you started from. Don't forget where you started from. <laughs> How many of us, have, if most of us, if we look back to when, before we came to America, for example, you know that there has been a lot of changes. Don't forget where you started from. There's a saying in my part of the world that any stream that forgets the, its source is a dry. Don't forget where you came from. Always bear it in mind. Don't forget how you were born. As a matter of fact, when you were born, just remember. I mean, see how a child is conceived. The moment the child is conceived, just a little dot. That was how you were. Then remember how you came, when you came into this world, how you were, how a baby is. Nothing. Doesn't have any power of his or her own. Don't cannot do anything by him or herself. That was how you were. Don't forget where you started from, please. Then you will see so many things. When I remember, when I cast my mind back. And I see quite a number of things. And I see where I was at certain points in life. I cannot but thank God. When I cast my mind back, and I know and I remember where I started from, I can't but be merciful unto certain people. When I cast my mind back to remember where I was and how I was at certain points in my life and in my history, I cannot but be humble. If nobody needs to preach the message of humility to you, if only you remember where you started from. First Samuel chapter 15, verses 17 to 19. First Samuel chapter 15, verses 17 to 19. The Bible says there that, and Samuel said, when thou was little in thy own sight. There was a time that you were little in your own sight. First Samuel chapter 15, verses 17 to 19. And Samuel said, Samuel said, When thou was little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. Verse 18 says that, And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them unto David of Job. Wherefore then, if thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but this fly upon the spoil and this evil in the sight of the Lord. In this case, Samuel was reminding Saul that you remember when you were nobody. Remember when you were nothing. Even in your own sight, if they ask you about you, there will be time that you will yourself will confess that I have nothing. So don't forget, especially when God is giving you an instruction. What happened there was King Saul did not obey the instruction of the Almighty God. And Prophet Samuel was asking him that, do you remember where you are coming from? How dare you not carry out the instruction of the Lord God Almighty who brought you here? So, brethren, I want to remind you, please. I beg of you, remember where you started from. Remember when you were in your lonely estate. Remember when you were young. Remember when you were poor. Remember when you could not afford your own meal. Remember when you could not even walk by yourself. Remember that time you, that you were sick. And even look around you, you know that God has brought you very far. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, God was speaking. God was speaking about the He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I just want us to understand that you, if you remember where you are, when you could not apply for a job, God gave you a job. When you could not get an appointment on your own, God appointed you. You are indeed just a thought in God's mind. And can I say that somehow, somehow, at the end of the day, 
at some point later, you will end up as just a thought in somebody's mind. For those who have passed right now, there is nothing concerning the other than just a thought in your heart. Oh, I remember such a such a person. I remember it's just a thought. You were a thought. You will go back one day to become just a thought. I go to number six quickly. Number six, I hope I'll finish in 10, 10 minutes time. Number six, you should not forget where you are going and what your legacy will be. Brethren, don't forget where you are going and what your legacy will be. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. The Bible says, For you look for a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The Bible says that, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus had a focus. Jesus had somewhere in mind. He knew where he was going. And it was because of the joy that was set before him, he continued in that way. Please don't forget where you are going. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. The Bible says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forget those, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Please have in your sight, have in clear focus the place that you want to go. By the time you leave this earth, how do you want to remember what is your legacy? What is your legacy going to be? Can I tell you that your children, the children that God, that God is giving you, they are going to be part of your legacy. How are you molding your legacy today? These are things that you need to continue to keep in mind. And these are the things that um, I need to remind you. Decide how you want to be remembered. Brethren, decide how you want to be remembered and begin to do something about it today. Jesus himself said that do this in remembrance of me. He wanted to be remembered all the time about it. The legacy of some who were such that after their death, even their dead bodies was raising the dead. I don't after their death. I pray that God will put us into remembrance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have just two more to go. And that is the fact that the world is waiting for your manifestation. Number seven, the world is waiting for your manifestation. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. The Bible says, For the honest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible says that according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Numbers 14, verse 29. I'm just reading to you, just reminding us, please remember. Numbers 14, verse 29. The Bible says that your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness and all that were numbered of you according to your own number from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against you. Please, that is also something that you need to remember. That you may remember and do all my commandments and be only unto your God. Remember and do what is only unto your God. Now, just what you have is that what is the process? Two things. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Though you are a son, yet he learned the obedience by the things which he suffered. And let's go. That is for you to have your manifestation, for you to manifest that which God wants you to do. One of the processes is to learn obedience. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. The Bible says there that and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. There is a way in which it can increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. That is the way in which you'll be able to get to your manifestation. And I know and I also pray again that whatever God has planned for you to become, it will surely manifest in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The last one that I'm going to bring to your attention is that number eight, don't forget that you are carrying a special treasure in you. Brethren, beloved, you are very valuable. You are carrying something. 
there's something that the Lord has put inside of you. Brethren, the Bible says concerning you that you're a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are able to do so many things. You can set up a memorial before God. I want you to take that into mind that there is a lot that you are capable of. Don't forget. Remember that you are a royal priesthood. Remember that there is a lot that you can do. In Acts chapter 10, verse 4, Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, verse 4, the Bible says that, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is, what is it, Lord? And he said unto me, thy prayers and thy hands are come up for a memorial before God. Everything that you are doing is going up before God as a memorial before him. Psalm, 50, Psalm 71, verses 5 to 7. Psalm chapter 71, verses 5 to 7. The Bible says that, For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Brethren, I'm going to be ending on this note, but I just want you to take this last verse. This last verse that I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. I pray for you that you be a wonder in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will surely be your refuge in the name. The Lord has been your refuge. He will continue to be your refuge in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will make you a wonder to many in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are watching you, those who are looking at you, those who don't even understand, those who see you from afar, when they see you, henceforth, you will be a wonder in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By virtue of the fact that the Bible says concerning you that indeed, indeed, nobody can destroy you. The Bible says concerning, concerning you that the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. You are the lot of the Almighty God. The rod of the wicked will not be able to rest upon you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be a wonder to this world in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every plan of God concerning his children, every plan of God concerning his servants, it will be manifested concerning you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By strength shall no man prevail. By his flesh shall no man be back. It is by the power of God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, that the Lord will fight your battles. The Lord will strengthen you. The Lord will help you. The Lord will be there for you all the time. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will continue to be your Alpha and your Omega. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So it is in that way that the Lord, will be for, the Lord will be with you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you will be an obedient servant of God. You will be an obedient child of God in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, will speak better things concerning you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus will speak better things than that of Abel, will speak concerning you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will shake the heart concerning you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will move mountains in order to lift you up in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God will be available for you in the mighty name of the Lord. The grace of the Lord, the almighty God, will be available for you in the mighty name of the Lord. Even the grace to serve God. Even the grace to serve God with reverence, the grace to serve God with godly fear will be your portion in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not be forgetful of these things in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember every word of God concerning you and begin to walk in it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, I commend to you, let your, let your conversation be without covetousness in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That which the Lord has put before you, you'll be contented with it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The almighty God will help you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The almighty God will be your helper. You will not fear what man can do unto you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has been there for people of old 
it will be there for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord was there for you yesterday. The Lord helped you yesterday. The Lord, the Lord catered for you yesterday. The Lord defended you yesterday. The Lord, the, 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 the Lord secured you yesterday. The Lord saved you yesterday. That same God is still available. It will be there for you in every way. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The almighty God will be there for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will remember you. The mercy of God will envelop you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray once more that the Lord will remember you for good. The Bible says concerning you that uh, for the wood offering at uh, times appointed and for the fourth fruit, the Bible says that remember me, oh my God for good. I pray concerning every one of you that you have been given offering, that you have been available, you have even made yourself living sacrifices. The Lord will remember you for good in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go, even though there is nobody that is righteous, the Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one. The Lord will righteous you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will make you righteous in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will be merciful unto you wherever you go. The hand of the Lord will be upon you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the, Bible, the Bible talks about some people and say, oh, how are the mighty for me? I pray that you will not fall in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the Bible says that oh, the mighty for the horses are the weapons of war perish. The weapons that the Lord has put on your hands, they will not perish in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not fall, you will not fail in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said concerning, the, 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 the Lord said, uh, Prophet Nathan to David, and he was speaking concerning his son, that even if he does wrong, that he will deal with him. But he said concerning the bed, my mercy shall not depart away from him. That is, even if you do wrong, the almighty God will make sure that his mercy, his mercy stays with you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will not remove his mercy concerning you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you. The Lord will anoint you. The Lord will anoint you for good in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will place people around you who will do you good in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord will make everything work out well for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you, brethren, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not do the unthinkable in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will not commit errors. The kind of errors that some people committed and they were, they were forgotten. You will not be forgotten in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you. I plead with you, please, bear in mind all these things. Don't forget it or else forget it. The Lord be with you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you, Pastor Nii. Church, if you have been blessed today, stretch out your hands and let's pray for our pastor. The way that he has poured into us this morning, let us also just speak into his life that God will also remember him. Let us pray for him. Oh, Lord, thank you for using Pastor Nii as a vessel this morning. Thank you, oh God, for how you have spoken to us through him, oh God. May your name be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for Pastor Nii and his family that the Lord will remember them in the mighty name of Jesus, that his family will also be for wonders in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord shall also be his refuge and his, and his, and his, and his father in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will keep him. The Lord will protect him, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everything concerning him, oh God, the Lord will perfect, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father in heaven, I pray for him that I pray for more unction on his life. I pray for more grace, oh God, to continue this pastoring, the ministering, oh God. I pray for him, oh God, that you will grant him the grace, oh God, to continue, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that the anointing upon his life, upon his family, oh God, will never be departed from him, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And all of the prayers and the declarations on the house today, oh God, that his family as well will be a partaker of these declarations and prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that when we hear about them, that it will, be, it will, all, it will all be good news, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
that you continue to lift his household, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, oh God, for using Pastor Nini this morning, oh God. And he has spoken to us, oh God. He has spoken your mind to us, oh God. Help us to remember those things, oh God, that Pastor Nini has spoken to us today, oh God. Help us to be better, oh God. Help us to do things that please you, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I really hope that you have been blessed today and I hope that you're able to see the summary points. May God help us to remember in the mighty name of Jesus. All right. Hello, everyone.